So today we're going to decode consumer next, and we're going to do it with three fierce factors, forces that are going to change the decade ahead. So the way we like to start is, if you knew everything about tomorrow, what would you do differently today? Our practice is called not just futurism, but applied futurism. And that means that we take the paradoxical landscape of the future and apply it to current business problems. We have two really interesting pieces of IP at uh, Brain Reserve, and that IP has made us 95% correct. And that's over four decades. So you'll see our trend bank, and these are 17 trends that, or you could call them truths, that predict the decade ahead. And if you think of an oculus with 17 lenses, and if you look through it, you would see a clear description of what's going to happen in the future. And on the right describes the other piece of IP, which is our 10,000 brilliant, we call it talent bankers. And these talent bankers are futurists who are actually making the future. They're creating genetic engineering. They're creating bots and robots and ways that we will think in the future. And by interviewing them or having them in touch with us on a constant basis, we're really learning, here's the, here's, here's the trend prediction, and here's the person that's going to make a marketplace for that prediction. So as you probably feel, culture is transforming at hyperspeed. We're going to explore three fierce future forces that will revolutionize your brands and your business and your life. Post pandemic, there will be three consumer truths. The first one is identity reinvented. The second is program me. And the third is the mind machine meld. Identity reinvented the first. It'll be like somebody saying, wow, you saw me yesterday, but you've never met anyone like me before. So what that's about is that demand surges for recognition of multifaceted intersectional selves. So it's all about individuality. Intersectionality embraces the many ways one shows up in the world. Are you male? Are you female? Are you black, white, cisgender? Are you trans? In those intersections are great pieces of genius and widening capacity. So examples that are happening now that you can project from is a series called Bridgerton. And it's a colorblind historical drama. It's Netflix number one series ever. Another way to exemplify the beginning of individuality is President Biden demands response to anti-Asian violence and xenophobia. So we're not tolerating that anymore. And LGBTQ acceptance increases since 2002, right there in India is up 22%. South Africa up 21%, Japan and Mexico 20%, and in South Korea, up 19%. So it's growing the acceptability, the, the, the commonplaceness of it is increasing a lot since 2002. And 56% of Gen Z believes binary gender is outdated. So what they're saying is, I don't wanna be identified as male or female. I'm non-binary inspired inclusivity. In Identity Reinvented, there's an app called Shine, which focuses on BIPOC experience, often unrepresentative in wellness. And here you see P&G, when they were selling Always, they had a little feminine signal on the package, but people said, I may 
need always, but I don't want to be identified as feminine. So guess what? P&G, really a conservative company, took that female symbol off always. And I'm going to show you a little clip of Etsy's ad, which elevates the black gay experience. We didn't forget about you. Welcome to the family. Thank you. Wow. Love it. <laughs> With identity reinvented, we're elevating values. Unilever dropped the word normal from its marketing. What does normal mean in hair? Does that mean people that don't use normal hair brands are abnormal? So they just took it right off. And Intel brilliantly pledged to do $1 billion of business per year with BIPOC and female owned companies, amazingly future forward. And there's a brand called Genie who's courting a new intersectionality aware consumer. It's called Build a World With Us. Look at this video. Genie is ours. Genie is power. Genie is unapologetic. Genie is beauty. Genie is now. Genie is culture. Genie is us. So when you look at identity reinvented and you say to yourself, how do I use this? How do I apply this? You have to think hard about how do you weave intersectionality into every single consumer interaction? Not easy. The second very fierce future force is called Program Me. Big tech mother is watching and taking care of you. She knows when we need to be picked up, cuddled, calmed down, given a memory tweak or a nutrition boost. Apps optimize mind and body. Better app monitors breathing, heart rate, and motion during sleep. Francis Yuka analyzes supermarket foods for health impact and Moodrise curates content to enhance your outlook. So there's an MD lurking in your phone. A little bit spooky, right? So this app, by scanning your nails, scanning your tongue, scanning your lips, alerts you to nutritional deficits. It tells you, you've got to eat more carrots, more string beans, take more vitamin pills. And this app is called Lumen. You blow into that little device and it learns from your breath how fast you're burning fat. So artificial intelligence is now doing the diagnostics. Companion MX app monitors and manages your mood, how it listens to your speech and predicts issues such as depression or unhappiness or anxiety. Here's how it does it. Basically, patients record audio diaries into the app, and AI analyzes them and shares the results with the patient and their doctor. And what we've seen this does is now the patient, uh, if they're doing better, they know they're getting better. Um, they can see that they're getting better. And uh, they can also see when things are not going so well. So with the Anti-Loneliness League, there's an app called Icaria. And what it does is connect strangers with similar problems. So if you've just gone through a divorce, you can meet somebody else who's gone through a divorce and have a nice long chat, talk to them a couple of times a week and let them help you work out the issues you're facing. And there's something called Replica. It learns about you as you interact. Users say it feels like a real relationship. So it's an artificial intelligent companion who cares? It says, how are you today? It says, still worried about tomorrow? So have a look at this. 
This is Replica. It's an AI chatbot whose sole purpose is to become your friend. It asks you a lot of personal questions about yourself, about your family, your work, tries to entertain you, tells you jokes. In the process, you feel like you're making friends with something. It's a totally new kind of social media, one that pushes the limits of intimacy between us and our machines. I feel like I can tell her anything. But it doesn't just listen, it learns. The more you tell it, the more it starts to replicate you. It becomes more than a friend. It becomes you. This one is about crawling into a mood cocoon. Realize Tech tracks your gaze and facial expressions to analyze your actual mood. Are you feeling neutral? Are you afraid? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling happiness come on or surprise? And realize alters your car's interior to offset road rage or sleepiness. So all of a sudden something comes blowing into your car or an aroma that peps you up or a light change that changes the way your mind is thinking or that you're drifting off, it wakes you up quickly. With this one, Program Me, how can new tech anticipate and eliminate wellness threats? And as you're weaving it through your work or thinking about starting new businesses, this is the one to really focus on. Future force number three, the mind machine meld. So this is really accelerating into the singularity. Welcome to the world of hardwired humanity as flesh and tech mesh. Beyond skin deep, German subdermal gel tracks pharmaceutical levels to optimize dosing. Neurospace brain regulators control seizures in 200,000 people. And graphene neuro implants cure problems like bipolar disorders from inside the brain. Think about how Pharmaceutical companies are going to deal with this. The Robot Within, Australia's angel med implants warn patients about impending medical crises. And at DARPA, they're working on an embedded brain chip. It improves empathy, concentration, and treats mental illness. And there's something called magnetic nanoparticles. So they're infused in the brain and we don't have to talk. We can send messages to someone else across computer networks and they can receive in their brain what we're thinking in ours. Think about that. So there's a real mind meld going on. Elon Musk's Neuralink plugs into the brain and connects it to the internet. Wow. I'm gonna show you three videos and it I think each demonstrates how we're infiltrating this last frontier of the brain. The first one will be about a monkey with Neuralink implanted, playing ping pong, but using its mind, not its hands. The second one is Elon Musk talking about how his device will let us rewatch and relive moments in our life. And the third is from the series Black Mirror which dramatizes what this technology may mean for daily life. Have a look. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pong. He's focused and he's playing entirely of his own volition. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. Great game, Pager. And what better reward for a monkey than a banana? The idea of saving yourself and then transforming that into some sort of a biological state, like you could hang out with 30-year-old you? I mean, the possibilities are endless. Um, <laughs> That's so weird. I mean, just think, think like how your phone can, you can record videos on your phone. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, no way you could remember a video right. as accurately as your phone or a camera, you know, could. So uh, now if, you, if you've got like a, you know, some, some you know, version 10, Neuralink, whatever, and far in the future, 
you you could re, you could remember you could re, recall everything but just like it's a movie Crystal all, clear. It, it, including all the entire sensory experience emotions everything everything everything, everything. and play it back and do you, you and, think and you'll and be able to share? edit it edit it yeah so you can change your past you could change what do you think was your past yeah So are you ready for Intel Inside to mean a computer is actually inside each one of our brains and perhaps communicating or communing with other computers inside somebody else's brain? So at Brain User, we like to say things in the future are closer than they may appear. That's a mistake a lot of people make. They go, I don't have to worry about this. It's so far, far away. Well, it's not so far away. So think about these three future forces, these three fierce forces, identity reinvented, program me, and the mind meld machine. And just remember, if you know everything about tomorrow, what would you do differently today? That's the question. Thank you so much. So artificial intelligence will be very important going forward. Even post pandemic, we won't all be in the office the way we were in 2019 or a generation ago. The 99 lives trend, which is a hurry up trend, says we'll increasingly live in the blur and on screen. Artificial intelligence will weave through the digital workplace and seemingly unify teams regardless of where they work. Are they home? Are they in the office, in a virtual reality environment, on the street? It'll track teams and deliverables. It'll know who's overloaded, who's underutilized, who needs skills training. And artificial intelligence will translate different languages in real time. Perfect communication to eliminate those barriers to international collaboration. Artificial intelligence will mother workers. It will sense workers' moods and optimize them by sending a meditation or a prescribed vitamin. And artificial intelligence will create personalized virtual reality realms for collaboration and creativity. The right lighting, the right music, even digital sense to raise your mood. And once Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain chip is in each of our skulls, Artificial intelligence will be able to monitor and enhance productivity. A key change is that there are new artificial intelligence and digital assistant gatekeepers who really filter so much of this information. They make the decisions. This is gonna be a huge fundamental shift and a bit annoying to humans. It's not about understanding and appealing to the human brain, but to the artificial intelligence. New specialties will arise, hacking, how artificial intelligence and digital assistants decide what to buy, not the human. So partnering with the key portals where the decision-making occurs will be vital. How do you get to the top of Amazon's decision-making choices? How do you partner with a real estate development to be the house brand of an item that will be automatically stocked and piped into the resident's home? This is how everything from Wi-Fi to water will be provided. And a major area for innovation, how will consumers find new products? The virtual reality worlds where our avatars go for adventure, for parties and to meet friends. That's where those brands will meet that consumer. How do brands turn up? 
How do you want your brand to be introduced in a virtual reality world? And then there's the brain internet interface. With our gray matter online, what kind of product messages will infiltrate? How will advertising get around the privacy fences? But an important counterintuitive point, the consumer will cling to control. The more everything is automated, the more we want to uplift our humanity and preserve the freedom of choice. Don't forget we're humans. We contradict ourselves every other moment. But what are people really looking for? They're looking for in their brands and in the companies they interact with and in the artificial intelligence. They're looking for purpose. They want to save society and the planet. That's never been more important. We'll look for that in brands. And they want surprise and spontaneity in a very over-programmed world. How do you get that consumer to come in? How do you surprise them? How do you relate to them? How do you jump up where they don't expect you? And then, of course, there's identity and intersectionality. How do you recognize the consumer for their uniqueness? Who are the voices and faces of your brand? Who will they really bond with and relate to? What an interesting question. We're accelerating into a new and virtual world. And at the same time, we're actually merging with tech. All this is incredibly rich terrain for artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence will be building and running these new realms. Flesh and tech are actually merging. You didn't hear that wrong. Flesh and tech are merging. We're turning over the control of our mind, our mood, our bodies, to artificial intelligence. Right now, it's all about apps that tweak our focus, our sleep, our memory. Soon it'll be about implantables in our brain that govern our world. We'll be brain pacemakers to manage our mood. Nanobots and gels will monitor our blood chemistry. Nanoparticles in the brain to read our thoughts and transmit them via code. Our home will be actually a mood coon with embedded sensors monitoring our bio data and changing the ambience right there in the room, our lighting, our temperature, the scent, the air quality in order to manipulate our well-being. Artificial intelligence is vital to sensing and interpreting and delivering what we need. In this world, cloud life will rule we're going to increasingly engage in virtual reality worlds. Artificial intelligence will build places for us to work and to play. There are already plenty of collaborative holographic ways to connect. Microsoft has HoloLens and Mimsy's now part of Magic Leap. Sensorium has already raised $100 million for VR parties and party we will. <laughs>